Hi. In this episode, I'm going to talk about why I take a statin. Even though I'm in my 30s and have no major risk factors and a minimal short-term 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease. And furthermore, why I believe everybody should do the same as me. The main reason for doing this is this. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. It remains a major cause of death and disability even in my demographic of men who have optimal risk factors for cardiovascular disease. For example, in one paper published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, one of the most important medical journals in the world, in 2012, men at age 45 who had risk factors that were all optimal, including a systolic and diastolic blood pressure below 120 and 80 millimeters mercury, respectively, a total cholesterol of below 180 milligrams per deciliter, no diabetes, and no tobacco smoking. Among these men with perfect risk factors, they still had a risk of having a cardiovascular event of 15% by age 80. In other words, more than a 1 in 8 chance of having a cardiovascular event by age 80. Men with just one risk factor that was not optimal had a risk of a full 35% by age 85, or more than one-third of these men had a cardiovascular event by age 85 if they only had a single marker that was not optimal. Furthermore, subclinical atherosclerosis which affects quality of life, sexual, and physical functioning is even more prevalent than these figures indicate. Uh, with respect to sexual functioning in particular, it may be of interest to people to know that subclinical atherosclerosis is a leading cause of erectile dysfunction. Why would anyone take any chances whatsoever Take a statin. We know that statins reduce cardiovascular risk regardless of whether or not LDL cholesterol is elevated. This is because LDL cholesterol is necessary for atherosclerosis. The lower you can reduce it, the more risk is reduced. Regardless of baseline risk, with larger risk reductions, the longer one's lipids have been reduced. And we know this from this study called Low Density Lipoproteins Cause Atherosclerotic Cardiovascular Disease, Evidence from Genetic Epidemiologic and Clinical Studies, a Consensus Statement from the European Atherosclerosis Society Consensus Panel. The benefits of LDL reduction are cumulative, this is because impact of LDL cholesterol on cardiovascular disease risk is itself cumulative, similar to pack years in tobacco smoking. Although there is scant evidence for the prevention of cardiovascular disease in people younger than 40, that is to say, starting below, before the age of 40, such an approach is, support, is supported by a convergence of evidence indeed much better than is the current practice of waiting for a later age. Indeed, as an article called Time to Relax the 40-Year-Old Age Threshold for Pharmacologic Cholesterol Lowering, published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, points out, LDL cholesterol exposure in early adulthood may pose greater risk than the same level of exposure later in life. This would suggest that it's actually better 
to begin lowering one's LDL cholesterol earlier in life rather than later, the opposite of what current clinical guidelines recommend. Therefore, current guidelines on statin treatment are excessively conservative and at odds with the currently available total body of evidence. What's more, the side effects of statins are minimal and dramatically overstated in the popular media. As the classic meta-analysis by Feingold and colleagues of 29 randomized controlled trials involving more than 83,000 patients showed, quote, only a minority of symptoms reported on statins are genuinely due to statins. And a paper published this month showed very clearly that even intensive lipid lowering of LDL cholesterol levels below 40 milligrams per deciliter due to statins and other drugs produced benefits that far exceeded the risks. And this paper was called Low Levels of Low-Density Lipoprotein Cholesterol, Intracerebral Hemorrhage, and Other Safety Issues. Is there still a matter of debate? The risks are even smaller in those treated with the newer classes of lipid-lowering agents, arguably, such as azetamibe and the PCSK9 inhibitors. Indeed, the injectable PCSK9 inhibitor, Inclisiran, which requires treatment only twice per year, halves LDL cholesterol with fewer side effects than statin therapy and is a candidate for universal lipid reduction, such as what I am currently proposing. In my case, I take 2.5 milligrams of rosuvastatin and 5 milligrams of azetamibe, a combination therapy that produces most of the LDL lowering effects of higher doses of these medications while still minimizing the side effects. I do this because these drugs are dirt cheap, they are generic, they are produced not by a big major pharmaceutical company, but by generic manufacturers that produce these pills for pennies on the dollar. I experience no side effects whatsoever, despite a highly active lifestyle as a combat sports athlete. To me, it only seems obvious. For people who experience a similarly non-existent side effect profile of lipid-lowering medications, I think the decision to use these drugs to minimize long-term cardiovascular disease risk is cut and dry, black and white. Everyone should try it and do it if they can tolerate it. Thanks for watching this video. If you would like to learn more about my views on a range of different health subjects, including uh, nutrition and lifestyle content, you can find me at Kevin and Bass, K E V I N N B A S S, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and on Patreon. On Patreon, if you want to support me, you can do so at that username. Find me at The Kevin Bass Show on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. If you like what you're hearing, check me out on Apple Podcasts and leave a review. It would be much appreciated. Leave a rating on both of those platforms. Leave feedback in the comments section if you have nothing to say, but you still want to help promote my video. Leave comments simply saying algo in the comments section of this video. And please click subscribe at the lower right hand corner of this video. That would be much appreciated. And of course, you would then be able to get this kind of content at the cutting edge of health, nutrition, and longevity whenever a new video is released. Positive and negative feedback is both appreciated, but please keep it full of substance, make actual arguments, and make sure to understand what I'm saying before you respond. Please do not respond with something nonsensical or unrelated to what I'm saying. Please tie it in 
to what I'm saying and do so in a generous and charitable spirit or else you will be removed and blocked from the channel permanently. I don't have time for that kind of thing. I just want to talk about science with people and the science of health and longevity and I welcome you even if you know very little about it and aren't sure that your views are uh, very well informed, please make comments and ask questions and to make criticisms in the spirit of trying to learn something rather than trying to tell me that I'm necessarily wrong. Unless you are an expert, in which case please also tell me what you think as well and we will talk about it. Thanks for watching the video. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.